welcome to Studio 5, a pioneer of praise and worship, Judith Christie McAllister, a capuchin monkey taking the big screen, and a superhero, an actor, Zachary Levi. They're all on deck for this week's show, and we have an exciting countdown of the five big stories from the world of uplifting entertainment. Here are your first two. At number five, we've got an exclusive preview of an incredible film based on a real life story and a monkey takes a starring role. It was, it was in the hospital. I was lying in the bed. It was cold. There were all these nurses. I know I, I looked like I was out of it, but I wasn't. I was awake. And it hurt a lot and I couldn't tell anyone. And then you came in. And you said, Don't leave, Nathaniel. You don't have my permission. Well, it begins with Nate, a young man whose life is turned upside down after he has left a quadriplegic. To him, moving forward in life looks and feels impossible. That is, until he meets a service animal, Gigi, a curious and intelligent capuchin monkey. There she is. Hey, Gigi. I don't think she likes me. <laughs> no, she likes me. She just doesn't know it yet. What I really have learned from my own family and from this film is just how like respect for, for conquering, for triumph, for moving through it, for choosing life rather than cho and choosing good life. Gigi and Nate is being released this Friday, September 2nd. It is worth seeing. At number four, I want to go home. Dismal ticket sales at the box office have this weekend earning its place as the lowest grossing of the summer, with theaters taking in an estimated 54 million total for all titles. Next weekend's box office numbers stand to be a bit better, with big news for September 3rd, National Cinema Day. For one day this year, September 3rd, tickets will cost just $3 at a majority of American theaters. It's part of a newly launched National Cinema Day to lure moviegoers during a quiet spell at the box office. More than 3,000 locations, including AMC and Regal Cinemas, are participating, as well as the major studios. That begins our countdown and brings us to a sit down with my absolute favorite worship leader. She's also a recording artist. In fact, Dr. Judith Christie McAllister is one of the most influential music ministry leaders of our time. Born in Harlem, New York, the Grammy nominated choir director, songwriter, producer, and author can be found leading worship in LA at West Angeles Church of God in Christ. She's recently released much of her catalog and we caught it with her sharing her gift with the homeless alongside Kirk Franklin, Maverick City Music, and Major as well, all of whom credit her with paving the way for their music careers. We are here sitting in the heart of Skid Row, if you will. Yes. You live in this, the LA area yourself. Yes. Uh -huh. What made you commit to being a part of this vision project for? for wow, well, I've always had a heart for missions and not just missions across the water, but missions right here. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good tidings to the meek. He said to those that are disenfranchised, of course, I'm paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. So the gospel is more than just what we do in the four walls of the church. When you're out there in this area and seeing what's on the street, what ha what's happening to your heart when you see what people are homeless, struggling? What, what do you think? Well, first of all, I'm very grateful. It's, it's I'm getting emotional now because I think about so many of them that are on the street corner. But for the grace of God, go I. And I want to do everything that I can to ensure that one person, wherever I am, is lifted. You are known, if you will, as the queen of praise and worship. Where did that come from? Was it birth as a child? What happened to Judy? That uh, well, I've sung all my life. Mm -hmm. um, however, it wasn't really until I came to Los Angeles and connected, the Lord connected uh, me with Bishop Charles Edward Blake. Bishop Blake, for being the quintessential worshiper that you are, we thank you. There was a vision that he had. And at that time, Ephraim, you know that we as a people 
did not stand and worship. It was something that was, oh, you know, yeah. you know, we were, we were, okay. So he said, I see a time when our people will be standing in worship and the song will be given back to the people. Praise and worship is the song of the people unto God. So that title, which I really shy away from, is something that was definitely given because of his vision and then me carrying out the vision. And so when I do my workshops and when I talk to ministers of music and worship leaders, I say, listen, stay connected to the vision of the house because the vision of the house can ultimately bless you because everything that I am, the reason why we're sitting here today wow. is because of the vision of Bishop Charles E. Blake Sr. Oh, we all love you. We love, love, <laughs> love, 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 love you. Thank you have re-released Raise the Praise. Yes. This was done first in 2000. 2002. I re-released all of my old music. Okay. Um, I own all my masters now. Okay. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> And so because I did not have the engine behind me, it became very difficult at the time to do it. So now I'm being introduced to a whole nother generation. Yeah. And people are like, oh my goodness, I didn't know you wrote that song. Or I didn't know, you know, they've done covers of the song and things of that nature. So we're really excited about what God is doing in this season. And I believe it's the sound even of the season to give a new fresh and something with foundation. Yeah. You know, because a lot of the music today, even though I love it and we jam to it, we party and all of that, some of it, it doesn't really have any weight to it. And so we, we um, when we worship God, we must make sure that we have something that is stable. Mighty Fortress is our God. Those are the hymns of the church, yeah. you know, Blessed Assurance. You know, you think of those songs when you're going through. And so to God be the glory. The day that the Lord has made. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. Come on. It's so tempting. I simply adore Judith Christie McAllister, and you can now get copies of three of her projects wherever you get your music. Raise the Praise, Send Judah First, and In His Presence are on all music platforms. Still ahead. It's not coming out. Let's try the peanut butter. Come on, Gigi. Ooh, look at that. Oh, she's supposed to be helping me. We're going behind the scenes of Gigi and Nate with the film's director, Nick Ham. Nick, what's the challenge of directing a film with a, a monkey? Mom, you can't keep a freaking monkey in the house. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Look, <gasps> see, you don't disturb her when she's eating. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep as the world watches from the outside. It's a big diplomatic tug of war here in the Middle East. Go inside the story with Jerusalem Dateline. Israeli archaeologists are talking about a discovery that could change the thinking about the Temple Mount. Join CBN Jerusalem Bureau Chief Chris Mitchell and get the biblical perspective on the events shaping the world. It's what starts in Israel then ends up going to other places. Watch Jerusalem Dateline Friday night at 8.30 on the CBN News Channel. At number three. Hello, this is Kel Mitchell, and I want to welcome you to tonight's Bedtime Bible Story. That's youth pastor and actor Kel Mitchell, now lending his voice to the streaming app Pray.com, reading of Jesus' Sermon on the Mount. Tonight's story is based on the teachings of Jesus, spoken from a hillside in the land of Galilee. At number two. My brother gave his life hunting the enemy. His task is now mine. The long-awaited The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power streams to Amazon September 2nd. This epic series is set thousands of years before the events of Tolkien's The Hobbit and The Lord of the Rings. Stand with me. Ours was no chance meeting, not fate, nor destiny. Ours was the work of something greater. Now, Robert, I understand you were a serious Tolkien fan. 
Yeah, I always have been. I've always loved, you know, sort of like I, I read The Hobbit when I was really, really young, and and um, and I loved the movies. Um, I used to. I remember going to a birthday party of my, of my best mate Josh Hairsign, mm -hmm. and uh, we we all sat in the back row in the second movie, and we were all pretending we were shooting orcs, <laughs> um, there were bows and arrows and stuff. So it was always just a big part of growing up. I think I was just in that right space at the right time with my age, where I, where it was like sort of perfect. You have fought long enough, Galadriel. Put up your sword. Sophia and Owain, I have to talk about the chemistry between the two of you uh, on screen. On screen. <laughs> <laughs> One day, this will be your kingdom. The first, uh, well, the first time I met Sophia, she had a child in her arms, <laughs> and she was kind of walking towards me like this with a massive open, open smile. And she went, hello, love. <laughs> <laughs> and with the other arm, she kind of, she kind of put, put around me and, you know, embraced me and immediately I was part of the family. Choose not the path of fear, but that of faith. And welcome back to Studio 5. That's going to leave us with just one more story to share in this week's countdown. We'll have it for you in just a little bit. We now turn to an incredible film based on a real-life story, and a monkey takes a starring role. It begins with Nate, a young man whose life is turned upside down after he has left a quadriplegic. To him, moving forward in life looks and feels impossible. That is, until he meets his unlikely service animal, Gigi, a curious and intelligent capuchin monkey. The film is called Gigi and Nate. I've been in this wheelchair since I was 18. Just jump already! I was six weeks away from college. When I got paralyzed, I had nurses around the clock. And then one year ago, my life completely changed. I'd like to request a service animal for my son. And that's when I got Gigi. What was it about this story that tugged at your heart? I can only imagine. Uh, I think it's that moment of, of loss. Oh, something's wrong with Nate. I've experienced tragedy in my own family. What I really have learned from my own family and from this film is just how like respect for for conquering, for triumph, for moving through it, for choosing life rather than cho and choosing good life, choosing to be a good member of society rather than choosing the sadness and the victimization that you could choose. There she is. Hey, Gigi. I don't think she likes you. <laughs> Nick, what's the challenge of directing a film with a, a monkey? Mm. <laughs> Are you OK? Whatever you estimate the length of time is for a scene, when anybody tells you, whenever everybody, Marcia and I ever do an animal movie again, and somebody says, oh, well, that's going to take you half an hour. You know what? We're going to know their life, all right? <laughs> because it, it's just not the case. The, the, um, the, the entire uh, paradigm of working with an animal throws this wild card into a scene which the actors have rehearsed and worked and they understand. But then when you introduce a monkey into that, the monkey hasn't rehearsed, the monkey doesn't. You know, he doesn't know that his moment, their moment is there. So what you're watching is actors staying in character, dealing with a live animal in character in that moment. Now that is incredibly skillful for people to do that. All the way now. Uh, oh man. Uh. That to me was, as a director, watching that process was fantastic. Marsha, what would you say the overriding theme of this story is? What did you take from it? The overriding theme is triumph. Shame, shame, shame! We are one. That's the beauty of this earth. And everything is connected. And I think that in that connection is glory and beauty and love and triumph and, and tragedy. And that's what I think, you know, this little movie is about those big things. And, mm. and makes it so worthy. Gigi allows me to live my life to the fullest every single day. 
<laughs> I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for her. Gigi and Nate is being released Friday, September 2nd. With that, we have arrived at a familiar point in the show. It's time for this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. It's your weekly story in pictures. We take you back to Monday in New York at Arthur Ashe Stadium. That's where Serena Williams began playing what is likely the final tournament of her incredible tennis career. The stadium was packed with family, friends, fans, and the famous, all on hand to witness her final Grand Slam tournament. Williams is now 40, and I am retirement to focus on her personal life, family, and other business ventures. This photographic salute to the GOAT is this week's Studio 5 Snapshot. Coming up next. By the way, that's also a little more age appropriate. I mean, I, I, I commend our I mean, two times great grandparents. Basically... Actor and author Zachary Levi does the heavy lifting to move from suicidal to superhero. And Shazam, he joins us next. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com. Shazam! Fury of the Gods hits theaters December 21st, and of course, Zachary Levi reprises his role as Shazam with some new exciting additions, Lucy Liu and Helen Mirren. We had the chance to chat with Levi about his journey to this incredible role. You could say it's one that took him from suicide to superhero. Hello? Say my name so my powers may flow through you but I don't know your name, sir. Shazam. You actually initially said no to the role? <laughs> what? <laughs> so, to the first no, one? no, 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 well, so, yeah, yes and no. Shazam? I had received an email for an audition that had been set up for the role of Shazam. You're the only person I know that knows anything about this Kate Crusader stuff. Can I? Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I'm reading this email. I'm like, this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. So I, I email back. I go, aren't they looking for like super jacked dudes at the very least, but also super, super famous jacked dudes. And I am neither of these things. And God bless the assistant who was on the other side of this email because their response to me felt like this emoji. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> you have super strength. And so I said, Respectfully, I, I, you know, I'll decline. I don't want to be wasting everybody's time because I felt like I'd be wasting everybody's time. Can you fly? If I quit your meal, I still rap with Sage. If I quit this season, I still be the greatest. So that's what I turned down. Then two months later, after going through this, you know, basically, you know, at the, near the very end of my programming at, at this therapy, but still there, and. Um, I got this email and it was like, hey, don't mean to bug you. Cause I told my agency, I was like, listen, I'm off grid. I'm doing some healing stuff. And they're like, yeah, don't, 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 don't. But then of course, in cl classic Hollywood fashion, don't mean to bug, um, <laughs> but hey, there's this other role. It's a supporting role. It's like one scene. Um, and I just had this breakthrough and I was like, you know what? Okay. You're like a bad guy, right? Hey. Came home from the gym, put my phone up on the dresser, pinned it with some books hit record, did one take, liked it, started doing a second take, bungled it, stopped it, went back and I was like, you know what, I like the first take, I'll just send one take. And then, and that was on a Friday. And then that night, I start getting, my phone starts blowing up and my agent's like, uh, so, as it turns out, they haven't hired their Shazam. Not only do they love you for this role, they think you could actually be Shazam. My head's spinning out of control. I'm like, what is happening right now? And then over the course of the next 
seven days from Friday to Friday. I mean, I was, I finished my stuff in, in therapy. I flew to LA, I camera tested. And then that next Friday, I got a call and I said, you are now Shazam. Gentlemen. You have bullet immunity. I'm bulletproof. Part of the reason I like sharing that story is because I, I really need people to understand that there is no too late. There's just, there's just not. We, we, we think in this very human, linear, uh, limited way. God does not. And the work that we can and should do on our lives can absolutely open up so many avenues within our own life if we are willing to go there and really, you know, heal. Say my name. Really? No, not my name. No, the, say the name that I say to turn into this guy. Shazam! Zachary Levi's book is available right now. And again, you can see him in Shazam, Fury of the Gods, when it hits theaters December 21st. You can call it an early Christmas present. With that, we have made it to the final story in this week's countdown of the five big headlines in the world of uplifting entertainment. Here's what's finishing on top this week. At number one. Mom, I'm going to the major leagues. <laughs> I'm going, mama. I'm going, mom. I promise. I promise, mom. I'm going. It's the phone call that's gone viral. Winton Bernard telling his mom the major leagues called after a decade in the minors. Winton. How you doing, Steve? My youngest son's name is Winton. No, it's not. Yes, he is. What do you do for a living, Winton? I, uh, I study at Niagara University. I play Division I baseball there. And uh, currently, I'm trying to grow out the pro like you used to. That's all the plays do. We all met Winton 11 years ago on Family Feud. And now, you won. Back toward third, and for Major League hit for Winton Bernard, the 31-year-old rookie. I love you so much. Thank you for everything, Mom. Thank you. Just moments away. I will call upon the Lord. Come on, put your hands up. He is worthy to be worshipped. Worship leader, recording artist, and the first lady of praise and worship. Praise Dr. Judith Christie McAllister returns with a final word. On October 1st, 1961, history was made when a tiny station began transmitting the first signals of the Christian Broadcasting Network. CBN, the Christian Broadcasting Network. And now, a new era has begun with the all-new CBN News Channel. Just moments ago, the Iron Dome intercepted an incoming rocket right on the Gaza border. And ministering in this area, spiritual warfare is definitely involved. A 24-7 news network, bringing you the news you want from a source you can trust. In Kenya, 40% of the medical services are actually provided by these Christian hospitals. Let's talk about the economy. Believers here are joining together to win people to Jesus Christ. All your favorite shows now in one place. Go to CBNNewsChannel.com to find out how to get the CBN News Channel on your TV all day, every day. CBN News. Life is better with a good night's sleep. Get your free DVD or booklet of Protect Your Sleep today. Life, it's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest. Life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your everyday. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life, live it fully. 
cbn.com. And welcome back to Studio 5. Music drives this show each week, and today's soundtrack comes from Tasha Cobbs Leonard. Take a listen, and you'll hear why the moment is what's playing in my ear. That single is from Tasha Cobbs Leonard's latest. And on that musical note, we are just about out of time for this week's edition of Studio 5. So let's take a moment and look ahead to what we're working to bring you come next week. And it's a jam-packed show. And action! Hey. Sylvester Stallone is an old and new kind of superhero in this action drama. This superhero says, I've had enough of trying to save society. I can't even save myself. And he goes into hiding for 25 years. Another long night of crime and violence. Some say it's only a matter of time before the city implodes. We'll take you behind the scenes of Samaritan, the highly anticipated gritty tale following a young boy in search of that long lost and legendary vigilante. I found him. Samaritan. Samaritan died 25 years ago. That's what they say. Sam, my character, um, he's kind of looking for that Samaritan because he, they need help in the city at that point. Here we go. Ready and action. Lots to look forward to. I hope you'll join us for that story and so much more come next week. Before we say goodbye today, though, we want to return to Los Angeles for a final word from singer, songwriter, worship leader, and author, Dr. Judith Christine McAllister. You can go back in time and talk to young Judy. What would you tell her? Be fearless. Mm. Don't let anybody tell you what you could, cannot or could not do. Stand on your convictions to know that this is what God would have you to do. Don't worry about the storms because the storms will pass. Sometimes when we're in the storm, all we see is the storm. We see the wind and the, and the waves and all of that. And we just get so focused on the storm like Peter mm -hmm. yeah. that we fail to remember the word of the Lord. So I would tell her, hold on. The storm does not stay. The storm comes to pass. Judith Christie McAllister, thank you so much. That is a great final word for this edition of Studio 5 and for this week's look at uplifting entertainment. Until next time, make time to uplift someone around you and then please come back right here and see where Studio 5 is going to take you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you for watching.